So I just want to um, talk about one topic and then we'll come back to everything else. So let's say we have a function f of x equals, let's say, 3 uh, x to the third minus 4. And we're asked to find max min. That's the question. Find max min for this function. OK, so what do I have to do first? Find the first derivative. Excellent. Can anyone give us the first derivative? It's going to be 9x to the squared. Excellent. To the, to the 2. Good. Squared, and squared, or power 2 is the same thing. What will be the second step? That the derivative is equal to 0 and defined. Very good. It's a polynomial function. That's not possible. So setting this equal to 0, what do we get? Is it plus negative 3? So when we look at this equation, first of all, we have to realize that we have to divide both sides by 9. Is it 0? Yes. And then we get x squared equals 0, so x equals 0. Is that clear? Is that OK? Yes? Yes. Good. Now I'm going to ask you, please guess, is this a max or a min? Just a wild guess. A uh, min. OK. One guess is a min. Anyone else? Max. OK. Max. Anyone else? Uh, min. Min. Anyone else? Max. Very good. Anyone else? A max. OK. Another max. Anyone else? Max. OK. Anyone else? Max. OK. Anyone else? OK. So now before I explain this, I want to go back to the previous lecture. Let me guess. There is no min on or max, right? OK. So first of all, here what here's what we said. So in order to find a max min, I, I have it in the previous lesson. So in order to find a max min, as you perfectly said, we have to find the derivative. We have to set it equal to 0 and undefined. And then we have to check. If we don't check the sign, we cannot conclude whether that is a max or a min or none of the above. So I'm begging you not to guess. Please do not guess. Why? We must study, that's step three, we must study the sign of f prime. If it does not change sign at zero, all this is gibberish, useless. So x, f prime of x, negative infinity to infinity is 0. At 0, f prime is 0. Here is f prime. Please plug in a number to the left of 0 and plug in a number to the right of 0 and tell me the sign. Positive. Ah. So this is a critical number, but the derivative does not say a change sign. So no 
max or min. See what this is, the step three, without step three, we cannot conclude. What if, so this is a different question, okay? What if the sign would have been this? What would you have said? This is our relative minimum? Yes. What, a different question. What if the sign would have been this? What would you have said? It's max. Yes. What if the sign would have been this? What would you have said? That this is no minimum or no max. No min, no max. So the point I'm making is based on the homework from last time. So 50% of you roughly did not analyze anything and said, oh, this must be a maximum. 50% of you paid attention because I'm stressing this and I know you're listening to me 10 million times saying the same thing and I apologize for that. And the other 50% analyzed, used the table correctly and said, oh, because it's this, it's a minimum. Because it's this, it's a maximum. So the point I'm making is, you, I don't want anyone to miss points on upcoming tests or the final exam. If you do not show the sign change or not, you cannot, and that will break my heart, you cannot get 100%. Because you cannot, I gave you, the option I asked everyone, you picked, but we cannot pick. We learned what the first derivative is doing or is telling us about the function. We have to present the table. Either this or this or this or this. There are only four options. And after I present the table, then I identify nothing. Minimum, maximum, nothing. Okay. Did I make my point? Is this clear why? Yes. Okay, that's all I needed. So now we can go back to our little daily puzzle. And after we resummarize the information, um, then we'll, we'll continue with uh, what we left off here because we didn't finish it. Okay, ready. Again, we are reviewing both steps in finding a max min of a function. You already told me the first step. I have to find f prime. We already did this a minute ago. You already told me step two. I have to solve this equation. Or, but I have to solve both if they exist, right? f prime of x being undefined. Assuming I find critical numbers from here, what is the mandatory third step that we will never forget again? Let's check the sign. Yes, study the sign of f prime. Brilliant. So please don't forget all these three. Good. Steps in finding an inflection point. Exactly the same thing, but this time we have to find the second derivative. In step two, the same thing, but for the second derivative. Assuming we get some x from here, this is not called a critical number. This is a Let's say we get some x. What is the third mandatory step to identify an inflection point? Study the sign. Of the? Um, second derivative. Yes. If there is no sign change, there is no inflection point. There is, if there is no sign change, there is no max min. So if I find that the second derivative never changes a sign, I don't care what I got here. There is no inflection point. Okay, enough of that. Thank you so much. Good. So um, I'm going to call this uh, page, uh, so this is my one, but I'm going to call this page 1A. Or maybe, maybe I should put it after two. So then I'm going to call it three. That's even better. So sorry, I'm going to scan it again.
uh, with this lecture, with the today's lecture. Okay, so we are trying to finish the problem we started last time. And the problem we studied last time was another rational function. Um, but this time, it had that little trick. So we factored. We did not look at the numerator. The domain never depends on the numerator. The domain always, for a rational function, always depends on the denominator. I remember on the first test, some of you stated restrictions for the top. We never do that. The numerator is free to be anything. But the denominator is not free to be anything. If it is negative 5, then this fraction is undefined. If it is 3, then there is a different problem. It's 0 over 0. So we identify these two. We said negative 5 is out, 3 is out. Only then we have to study the domain on the raw function. Only then we said, oh, look at that. I can simplify x minus 3 with x minus 3. So then now the simplified form of this fraction is so much easier to work with. This is ugly. This is very nice. Very easy to find the first derivative. Very easy to find the second derivative. This is not nice. But look at that. The moment we eliminated this factor, and we immediately wrote in our table that this must be a hole in the graph or a op so-called open point. If you don't like to say a hole, it's just open point. But x plus 5 still stays in the problem or in the simplified form. So this must be a vertical asymptote at negative 5. So now we're going to find these limits. I need something in here, everywhere. I need to plug in 0. Can anyone tell us if we plug in 0, what do we get? When x is 0, how much is the y value? More than 10. Very good. Awesome. Perfect. So now let's determine the rest of the limits. OK. So, limit, so let's start with these two. When I determine these limits, what am I trying to find when I determine these limits? What, is the picture blurry for everyone else, or is it just me? Yeah, it's a little blurry. OK, so uh, it must be at my end. Let me, um, can you be on standby for a second so I can, uh, I don't think you have to do anything. I just need to reboot my system then. Just give me one second, because what's the point if, if you can't see? Is that OK with everyone? Yes. 